This automobile has never been on the list of cars that I would like to buy for myself. I don't want to buy an Audi Q8 and I don't want to buy it, not because it's bad in some way or something, I simply don't like it. This car is just not for me and that is because they don't make fast cars in this class so far, but I hope that someday they will. And of course I'm expecting for a new Audi RS6 and I'm really looking forward to it, because I'm more than sure that the new Audi RS6 is going to kick lots of asses when it comes to the market. The car standing behind my back is a Lamborghini Urus, and this is purely the same automobile. It just looks a little bit different, but if we put the engine and the transmission from Audi RS6 inside here and put a Lambo logo here, we can sell it for 335,000 bucks. It has 340 horsepower, and this car has not much to talk about. So what do we have here? We have a car that in Russia costs from 67,000 to 133,000 bucks. And the price depends on options you choose. And recently they started to provide this car with diesel engines and they call this configuration a 55, an Audi Q855. And I already started to confuse all these numbers 55, 32, 78, it sounds crazy. It used to be so easy to understand an Audi A8 4.2 or an Audi A8 6.0 and it was so clear and easy to understand for everyone. By the way, we took this car not from the official dealership. In the dealership, as always, they shitted their pants and started playing for a time. For two months they were telling us that they are searching for an appropriate car. So in the end, for this test drive, we decided to take this car from the non-official dealership. And we took it from the place we already know, cause we already work with these guys and they are very cool. And as always, they agreed to get the real review and didn't mind us telling about this car everything we want. So this is a bigger package and it costs 97 and a half thousand, this particular car. And according to the vintage, this car is completely unsteerable. And I'm going to show you what I mean. What I usually expect from a car is just a regular steering when I drive it like this on a dry asphalt and when I turn the steering wheel. I expect it to turn and that's it. But it doesn't do that because look, here I accelerate to 20 or 25 miles per hour and then I take sharp left. It's 30 miles per hour and it keeps going straight. The wheels are turned but it keeps sliding. This is what I call a bad steering and here it comes. Now it started to lag, it closes the windows itself, this Audi started to panic as soon as the vintage pressed the gas pedal, all the indicators lit up. This car needs just one indicator saying I am not a BMW. <laughs> I have to say that this car may be difficult to handle if you like aggressive driving. And that's because it leans to sides and it rocks when you turn, even when this car is in the sport mode. And this particular car has a lowered suspension. But it doesn't seem to help in any way. A non-experienced driver can lose control pretty easy. Well, this 3-liter engine feels quite enough for such a big body, so I cannot call it slow even if I would want to. But anyway, here I drive it and I don't feel comfortable inside here, cause I don't trust these brakes, they start to smoke after a second pressing. The reaction for acceleration is horrible for me, but it may feel okay for some normal casual driver. Here I press it and… You see, nothing happens from the outside. I am flooring the gas pedal. Okay, whatever, now let's switch it to the sport mode and try to change lanes fast. And now look carefully, I'm going to press the gas pedal. And then I will turn. And this is what pisses me off on all of these cars, I just don't understand it. I press the gas pedal. And there's a 3 seconds gap before it starts to accelerate. And what if I'm having a situation on the road and I need to avoid it? It seems to be the car for people who never have any situations on the road. This is the car for those who just wants to get from point A to point B calmly and slowly. So if obeying rules and driving in a vegetable mode is what you are looking for, you are gonna love this car. It's really soft and cozy and it simply sails the road. 
I have to say that the front of this car is made very meticulously. All this design, all these lines, I consider this car very beautiful. It has this classic Audi look and its style. The color, well, it's the matter of taste. Do you recognize these door handles, these ugly Urus handles? As I said, it's the same car. Let's get inside. You guys already know. I like nitpicking, but even I find it quite easy to get to the back seat. There is no problem with getting inside here. It feels good and comfortable and there is enough place for… well, you know, for getting laid. It's good. You just have to tint the windows. It has a panoramic sunroof and you can find the dippings for the head here, so it has plenty of space even for a tall man. This is good. The interior is kind of strict, in German style, so to say, so it's not overloaded. And there are no extra details here. But at the same time, it doesn't provide any wow effect. This dashboard is quite recognizable. Everyone got used to it already. It works fine, it never lags because this is an Audi. The multimedia system is very intuitive. You know, I really tried hard to find some issues about this interior, but I couldn't. I made my best to find at least one fault with something. And the only thing I have found was this strange thing over here. It looks really odd and strange and I still don't know why they made it like this. But I guess it is here to protect the door from hitting the metal. I grab the handle and feel a eh, Lamborghini Urus. What can I tell you about this interior? There is not much about it, but I really like the multimedia system they put here a lot. And they also put it in Bentleys, in Lambos, in all Audis and the goddamn Oros. The Evo also gonna have it. It's very well made. So far I don't know much about the breakages and the diseases of these cars. I guess the time will show us how reliable they are. But what I know for sure is that this car is much better than a f***ing Range Rover. I searched online for some complaints about Audi Q8 and I did found them. Lots of people were telling that these cars have issues with the front suspension and the front observers in their particular. The main breakage concerns only the suspension, but it can be a serious pain in the ass. But I guess these problems are going to be fixed pretty soon. Well, all of these cars are raw in the beginning. Same happens to BMWs. We drove to Kazan on our X5. And something happened to its software. We've got some error and the suspension started to lag, we went to the service and they didn't even touch a single bolt, they just updated the software and still it works as a Swiss watch. So I don't even consider this a breakage. Cause for me a breakage means spending money when something fell off and you have to go and buy new details like the rear axle for a G-Wagon. This is what I call a breakage. This car has lots of safety systems, but that's a standard thing. On the whole, this car has only three advantages. It's multimedia system, it's appearance and it's price. That's it. And nothing more. And also I have to mention one little thing. Even despite these windows have no frames, they managed to realize a very good noise insulation in this car. So I have to admit that it's pretty comfortable to be inside of this car. It seems to have 21 inch wheels. 285, 45, 21. And these tires are very fat as you may see. So it's very soft and comfortable and it's lowered. And when the suspension raises it, it doesn't look that cool. But in this position, it looks satisfactorily. It feels very comfortable. When the surface becomes really rough and the road stops being smooth, this car shows what it was really made for. Though still we have to mine these huge fat tires and these ugly wheels, but if you want this car to look pretty, it definitely will not be the same confident and comfortable off the road with some cool and beautiful wheels. Rapid movement is not about this car, it's not for showing off, it's soft and calm for peaceful city driving and as I have said before, there won't be any wow effect from it. I would even say that this car is more suitable for a woman, but that's my personal opinion. This car has a very good visibility, except for the rear window, because it's angled and it's small and it reminds me of an X6 and that was the exact reason why I didn't buy a BMW X6. When I was choosing my next car, I simply didn't like the visibility of that small rear window. 
Now I'm looking at the windshield hut and it's so good, it's so high quality, so precise, it's so right. And I can clearly see the information even though it's being white with the white car in the background. The car shows me that the average fuel consumption is 18 liters for 60 miles in the city. And I would not call it economic, that's quite a significant consumption for such an engine. Well, it's okay. What else would you expect? It's pretty or definitely not ugly. At least it's not overloaded with details and lines as it was on that Lamborghini Urus. This trunk is neither big nor small, it's just average. And as always, I found some cheap plastic. And again, it's overpriced in Russia. For 55,000 I would gladly buy this car for my mom, but not for 95,000. 95,000 is too much for it. For this amount of money I can buy a flat in Moscow. The history of Audi Q8's life is quite controversial. And it's controversial because the competition in this class is insane. And buying such a car is not an easy task. And I will explain you why. Of course, you can give away 95,000 for this absolutely casual car that doesn't stand out among its straight competitors. And these lines will stay modern for maybe several months. But I think, and this is my personal opinion, so I think that instead of this Audi Q8, it would be more reasonable to spend 105 on this car. This car has the same 3-liter engine and it has 340 horsepower. But this is a Porsche. Yes, it's more expensive and yes, it's about showing off this car is more pretentious, but I consider it a car of a much better quality, that's for sure. And after all, Porsche is stylish, Porsche is cool. But if you are out of budget and you cannot afford a more expensive car, let's check a cheaper one. For example, this ML. This is a Mercedes 63 ML. Its owner bought it for 55,000. It's not new, it already has some mileage, but it's still in a perfect condition. So if you have money, you just have to keep in mind this Porsche. But nevertheless, if you have a tight budget, there are lots of other cars you can choose from. Lots of people often ask me, Davidich, test this car or test that car. Here I'm testing this out and it feels sad. Please, officer, stop me. This Audi Q8 is not interesting even for cops. You asked me to test it and now I don't even know what to tell about it. What do you expect? This is an Audi Q8. It's such a good automobile. It has such beautiful buttons down here. I want to press them. They are so shiny. Hey, bro, do you like it? Come on, try these buttons. Press them. Don't be shy. Good job. Did you like it? Please, someone send him a like. Fuck. Or should I sit here with a smart face reading you its technical specifications? This car has 3.4 meter length and it's 2.5 meter wide and its engine weighs this much and its full weight. Who the hell needs that? If you want to buy this particular car, you want to know how it feels to drive it. What it's like. It's already clear to everyone that car companies try to make us like these cars for their appearance. They want you to fall in love with its look and bring your money, so I'm here to remind you that the main thing in our lives are the impressions. It's the feeling and the pleasure from being alive, the pleasure from the movement of life, and we move, we travel, we do our things, we raise our children and so on. And it's the most pointless thing to argue which car breaks more often or which car is better, a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi or else. It's just pointless, cause all of them are shit. All of them. They simply fall apart when the time comes, so you have to get the car that is perfect for your personal needs. For example, you put a stroller into the trunk and it fits perfectly. Your car lets you place it and attach it the way you need and it won't roll and it makes you happy. And you feel you did a great job choosing this car. Or you own a fast and powerful car and when you press the gas pedal you humiliate that Mercedes E63 and you think to yourself, I bought the best car in the world, but there's absolutely nothing special about this car. The interior is the same as everywhere, the trunk is also average and yes. There is one cool feature. When it opens, this shelf automatically goes forward and opens the space. And when it closes, the shelf automatically goes back. Yes, it's cool. But you have to be insane to pay 97,000 for it.
Anyway, here what I think, if you like some car, it doesn't matter what it is, a Mercedes or a BMW or an Audi or just any car you own or want to buy, just buy it and don't think for too long, it must bring you an aesthetic pleasure and if it makes you feel excited, you just have to buy it. This is already the 85% of a good buy. But when you start to analyze it, damn, it has a problematic suspension, or this thing breaks too often, or this thing can fall off, and this car is full of disadvantages, remember, all the cars are the same today. You can nitpick any car if you try hard, for example, this front panel display. Here it has the gap from the right side, and it's straight, but it's not the same straight from the left. The gaps are different. They do not coincide, it stands crooked. They put it wrong here, it's a geometrical f up. Am I nitpicking? Yes, I am. But who the hell cares about this gap? If you really like this car and this multimedia system in the particular. And by the way, to be honest, this multimedia system is really good. So what do we have in the end? I would call this test drive just a brief introducing of this Audi Q8. This configuration, same as all the configurations I guess, is just a regular family car for calm city driving without any ambitions. Yes, it's soft and it's smooth and it's comfortable and it's pretty, but you have to remember that on the price from 65 to 135,000 you can buy lots of different automobiles. There's just a crazy space of variations. But after all, I cannot call this car bad because it's not, it's actually quite good. It's cool and it's comfortable and it has its own thing. And maybe if I didn't understand cars, I wouldn't even buy it. Well. I guess so, I could see it somewhere and like its design, it looks fresh to me, so if you are tired from everything else and you want to try something new, then yes, you can put it on your list. But mind that the difference between configurations may go up to 70,000, that's f***ing insane, it must be able to fly for a double price. Buying two of them with no extra options looks like a much better idea. And for those who really consider buying this car, I would recommend not to waste time on thinking about its technical characteristics, because it's absolutely standard and average, it doesn't have any advantages. So, if you really like how it looks like, and if you enjoy how it runs, and if you like this interior and it makes you feel excited, this is already enough for buying it. And don't listen to those who say that Audis break more often or BMWs and Mercedeses are more or less reliable. Don't listen to that, they're all the same. All of these cars come from one and the same industry that just wants to get our money. And all of these brands have a gentleman agreement and they make almost identical cars with slightly different design. My name is Eric Davidich and you are watching D3. Thanks a lot, goodbye.